Welcome to Counseling for Busy People. I'm Lisa Ryan. I'm here to help lift you up when you've made a mistake. It can be a small mistake, it can be a big mistake, but you must feel terrible. For what it's worth, everybody makes mistakes. I look at it this way. You and I are a member of a very big club if you've made a mistake, and I'm here to help you do the best you can to fix the mistake you've made, at least with language. So this is what I do that really helps when I have become a member of like that big mistake club, I call it, or um, opportunity for growth or learning. Uh, the first thing I do is I tell the person that I've hurt, I'm so sorry, because the word sorry to a person receiving an apology feels so much warmer and so much more genuine than the word apologize, like I apologize. So do your best to try and remember to say, I am so sorry, so we're so very sorry. It will hit their heart, okay? And remember that a great apology uh, is all about accountability. Personally, I think giants know how to apologize well. You know, um, littler people, definitely not you, struggle with apologies, and we'll get to that in a second, but I'm so sorry is essential. Secondly, choose something that you know that person wants you to be sorry for. So you may be sorry that you did something, and that's fine, you can apologize for that too, but it is really more important to offer an apology if you are of course, remorseful, to a person who really, really wants you to apologize for something specific. So one, I'm so sorry, and choose well. Number two, beat yourself up. Hyperbole is helpful, okay, exaggerate. I am so sorry that I was an hour late for you this afternoon. I was thoughtless, I was disorganized, I was disrespectful of your time. Use good language to beat yourself up. It's all about ownership. Uh, it's not about reducing yourself. It's just about owning your mistake. We all make them. Three, identify the pain or injury that you've caused somebody else. Like we'll go back to that um, late example. You must have felt so disrespected. You must have felt confused or what a head scratcher for you or you may have felt stood up. Uh, I don't know. Um, I identify the injury that you may have, have caused by being an hour late because that's at, at the very least really impolite and I know you know that um, and I suspect that you'd never be an hour late unless it was like a mistake mistake. Lastly, uh, wrap it up. Please don't promise to never do it again unless you can absolutely make sure that you're going to keep that promise because promise is such a big word, okay? So maybe you could like wrap it up by saying, I am going to do so much better in the future by setting an alarm on my phone so this doesn't happen again. I'm so sorry for disrespecting your time. Probably the most important thing to remember when you've made a boo-boo is not to offer two things. And if this helps you remember, they both start with an E. No excuses and no explanations. Because an apology is about ownership and you want it to be 100% about ownership. An explanation or an apology dilutes a wonderful, wonderful apology. And you don't wanna do that. Um, I try really hard not to. A lot of people, because they feel uncomfortable with the ownership, will say something like, if I made you feel badly, I'm sorry. That is like, no, that is salad tonguing an apology. Just say, I'm sorry I hurt you. That's all. We're all both going to be breathing here. Everybody's going to be fine. Some people use words like, but, however, the reason I did that was because you got to understand um, all of that stuff that dilutes a great apology. You will find that after you've said, I'm so sorry, and identified what you're sorry about, identified your shortcomings and why you made that mistake, 
identify the injury and wrap it up with no excuses or explanations, you're going to be speaking with somebody who is some grateful. And lastly, maybe the most important thing, an apology should always be accompanied with change. An apology is just a yeah, collection of words. Um, it, it's and, and we can all say anything at any time. If it's not backed up with a change in behavior, it means nothing. So make sure that you change your behavior um, to give your verbal apology credibility. So please don't beat yourself up. I can't tell you some of the horrible, horrible mistakes I've made. One of the most painful mistakes I've made with clients is sometimes when someone, say, say Sarah and Tom come into my office because Tom has been unfaithful with Jane, I have inadvertently called Sarah Jane. It's an occupational hazard. You talk about, oh my God, a huge painful mistake. And I've done it more than once. So many times now that I've created a strategy to no longer do that, I just use first initials with the other person. Because I would never want to hurt one of my clients. Oh goodness. If you're beating yourself up and you feel badly because you've made a mistake, at least remind yourself you have a lot of company. We all make mistakes every day and it's big people who own them and apologize well and do their best to change their behavior so whatever injury they've caused or whatever mistake they've made never happens again. So you are a good person. Take yourself off the hook. Own your mistake. Big club. Offer an apology and move forward. Love talking to you. Look forward to seeing you again in the next YouTube. Take care.